Five flaws in Boris Johnson's defence uh, and an afterthought. I'm Mike Cashman with the wickedly witty Augusta Lees. I read It's My Party and I'll still lie if I want to, judging by Johnson's performance in the committee. Do buy the book and support the channel. But anyway, the five flaws in Johnson's defence. Number one, he relied on not being found guilty of something proves your innocence. Uh, so several times mentioned that he hadn't had a fixed penalty notice. Uh, I don't think the committee took too much notice of this. Uh, the Met Police and indeed Sue Gray set their own scope and decided where to stop. But they did continue to question him about events where he clearly was present and fixed penalty notices were issued even though he didn't receive one. So he is required to answer on that. The second fatal flaw is to assume that because everybody in Downing Street believed that everything was OK, therefore it was OK. Now, the statement isn't entirely true, but he did rely on this several times. That is exactly the problem, that behind the door of 10 Downing Street, they felt that they could do what they want, uh, that there was enormous amount, at any rate, of flexibility in terms of the way that they ignored rules and guidance that the rest of us had to follow. The statement, as I say, is not entirely true because there was evidence produced by the committee uh, where doubts were raised as to whether events could be defended. But the third point is his reliance on getting an assurance from a political advisor uh, so not a civil servant taking a view on the rules, not somebody legally qualified, relying on a briefing from a comms or press advisor that they could use a line to say that the guidance was followed at all times. And it seems in some cases that uh, the event that that briefing line was intended for was used more widely. So I think in the committee was a reference to driving at 100 miles an hour in a 70 mile an hour zone, but not having heard from the passenger that the speed limit was being exceeded, uh, therefore the driver thought that the, uh, there was no problem with their driving. That's a good analogy. The fourth flaw is to assume, the fourth flaw in the defence, is to assume that social distancing measures taken elsewhere in the building mitigate what's happening at a particular event, which shouldn't be happening. So Johnson tried several times to point out the presence of hand sanitizer, uh, the presence of perspex screens. But as again, as the question has pointed out, they didn't see any perspex screens in the gatherings uh, that were held where people got together in a room unnecessarily. If you can get to get other people together in a room, you could get them to a room on which there's a whiteboard or flip chart which says we're having a meeting. Here's the Zoom. Uh, here's how to log on to it in Zoom, go to your desks and join us. But anyway, Johnson kept trying to refer to the Perspex screens and hand sanitizers. The committee pointed out those were not present in the photos, uh, photographs that they saw with Johnson present, uh, where there was drinking and toasting going on. Uh, the fifth floor, and this may not be an absolute legal failing, but I th do think it was unfair, a cheap shot, is to refer to the social distancing rules uh, or potential application of them with ridicule, with contempt, to say we couldn't expect to have force fields or lasers or magnetic fields around us or drill sergeants with tape measures. Whenever health and safety guidelines are applied, then there are people who take the view of the man in the street and it's a cheap shot to criticise the health and safety measures. I'm just trying to get a job done and can't be bothered with all these pettifogging measures. But this is a particularly cheap shot because that language of ridicule is being used to demean the very regulations and guidance which Johnson had himself promulgated and is now seeking to hold seeking to imply contempt for. That's unfair. Finally, I'll just mention that people have been warned against undermining respect for the committee, and Johnson was invited to declare his respect for the committee, and he did so only conditionally. Uh, as I heard what he was saying, it seemed to be, I trust the committee to find me innocent, and if it does, I will respect the decision, but I will reserve judgment. In other words, I won't respect the decision. I will reserve judgment 
if it doesn't. That is not respecting the committee. That is contempt for the committee in itself. That's my view. Feel free to add your view on Johnson's, Johnson's defence in the comments on the video. Uh, and I do. We'll keep saying, if you would like to support the channel, do buy our books and you'll get something that you can enjoy or give us a gift. It's my party and I'll still lie if I want to. I did get a response from one subscriber to this channel, or 6,000 of you, but a response from one subscriber who bought all the books. Thank you very much, Lisa from Sweden. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you can't buy them all, buy one. You can enjoy it. Give it as a gift to somebody else. Thank you.